Hi, this is Victor Chang, author of Case Interview Secrets and founder of CaseInterview.com. In today's video, I'll be talking about management consulting as a career choice. Specifically, I'll be talking about what the job entails, what makes a good consultant, what is the typical day in the life like of a consultant, why you might want to choose and consider a career in consulting, and finally, how to get a job in management consulting. Let's start by talking about what exactly is management consulting. So first off, management consulting is a professional service business, which means a client, typically a global 2000 firm, hires a company to provide services to it. Specifically to management consulting, these services really involve uh, analyzing complex business situations, um, developing insights and conclusions around that analysis, and ultimately ending up with recommendations around what to do next. Most management consulting uh, typically centers around strategic planning type issues, major complex high stakes decisions that are often very confusing um, uh, for, for clients. And these are the kinds of problems that don't always happen every day. Uh, they're once every couple of year type problems, which is why they often refer to consultants uh, for experience with these types of issues. So let's talk about what does a management consultant do? On a typical engagement, the consulting team will structure complex problems. So you'll hear this word a lot, structuring problems. It's just a fancy way of saying taking a very, very large, complicated problem that's really quite overwhelming for both the client and the consultant and breaking down the problem into its component parts. So rather than one overwhelming problem that seems impossible to solve, taking that problem, breaking it down to three, four, or five pieces that represent the entire problem, with each piece being much easier to analyze and, um, and to deal with. After you structure uh, a client problem, uh, the consultant team will uh, use a uh, analytical uh, problem-solving process that involves analyzing a lot of data. Right? So once you know what's going on with the situation that a client is facing, you want to quantify what's going on so you can numerically measure. Uh, you want to take hypotheses and ideas that clients have about what might be going on and try to quantify that. You ultimately want to do all this analysis and gather all these facts to derive uh, fact-based conclusions. So clients have many opinions on what is going on and what they should be doing. Consultants don't. <laughs> consultants only come up with conclusions that are based on fact. That is the role of the consultant and the consulting team. And ultimately, the consultant is responsible for making recommendations of what the client should do next. Here are a few common traits of management consultants. First off, they're excellent logical problem solvers. Right? This is really important. Every, every word I just said is extremely important. Excellent at solving problems logically. Some clients are brilliant at solving problems intuitively. Uh, Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, for example, um, is, comes to mind as an incredibly brilliant and insightful, intuitive uh, business leader, decision maker, and strategist. Okay? Steve Jobs would make a terrible consultant because his process is not logical and linear. Uh, it's based on vision, it's based on intuition, and can't easily be supported by fact. Doesn't mean he's wrong. In fact, Steve Jobs is right quite often. What it does mean is that he can't justify his decision to a client. And that's the important distinction uh, about management consultants, is their approach is logical, it can be followed by others, it can be understood by others, it can be defended, and therefore it can be accepted uh, in a, a reassuring, logically reassuring kind of way. Another skill is strong analytical skills. Consultants need to analyze a lot of qualitative and quantitative data. They need to make all of that make sense. They also need to have strong interpersonal skills. Um, I always say, and I've said for years, that consulting is very much a relationship business. So I worked at McKinsey for many years, and McKinsey was just fabulously good uh, at maintaining client relationships, in many cases, for multiple decades. Uh, there are some clients that I first worked with a long time ago that are still McKinsey clients, uh, you know, 20, 30 years later. Finally, uh, consultants usually have a similar um, strong academic background. There is a degree of academic rigor that correlates very well with certain aspects of being a good consultant. 
So in the recruiting process, recruiting uh, consulting firms often look for candidates with strong academic backgrounds because it genuinely does mesh very well with probably two-thirds of the job of, of a management consultant. Uh, the other one-third is the interpersonal skills. So those two combined uh, makes a really great candidate. All right, let's talk about what a day in the life of a consultant looks like. First off, there is no sort of representative day. Um, there, there's this cliche that I heard a lot as a candidate. Um, I've said a lot uh, as, a, as a consultant and recruiter. And, and now as an advisor to people entering the industry, I, I repeat it. There's, there's no two days that are alike. Uh, so that's probably the most interesting thing about a consultant is you really just don't know what you'll be doing a week or two weeks or a month or a year from now. Uh, every day is very, very different. So a, a few commonalities. Uh, first off, uh, the work hours, depending on the firm, can be quite substantial at times, uh, especially around major presentations. Um, some firms have kind of a nine, actually very few firms have a nine to five culture. Um, it's usually uh, the work that usually ends a little bit later than that. Uh, some have a more you know predictable, even, let's say, uh, work schedule. Uh, others will be much more, uh, have many more ups and downs. Depending on the firm culture, some firms do their work uh, at their home office. Uh, others work on client site. Uh, generally, the more uh, prestigious firms, better well-known firms like McKinsey, Bain, and BCG, uh, where possible logistically, will do a fair amount of their work on site uh, in order to really build relationships. Um, McKinsey, for example, for decades and perhaps even centuries at this point, although I don't think they're actually that old, uh, will usually work on client site four days a week uh, where that's feasible. And the main reason really is to get to know the clients, be around a lot, be a familiar face. And that's one of the reasons uh, I think McKinsey hangs on to client relationships for multiple decades is because these McKinsey, they just show up. They're there. Uh, they're there when you as a client need them. Um, and that's part of their competitive advantage. A consultant's lifestyle is largely dictated by a few things. The, the culture of the firm that you're working for, that's a big factor. The industry the client works in, what's typical for that industry, and then the client company themselves. So if your client is an investment bank, guess what? You're working in investment banking hours. Uh, if your client is a Silicon Valley uh, technology company, uh, guess what? You're, you're wearing jeans to work, right? and you're working probably later in the morning. Um, perhaps meeting later at night too. So it all depends on uh, the industry that you're working in. One thing, by the way, is if you want to have a great lifestyle, try to focus your consulting career serving clients who themselves have a great lifestyle. And um, that's an easy way to, especially if those clients are, are local and don't involve a lot of travel. Um, so if you want to not travel you, and you want to work in the financial industry, you work in New York or you work in London or you work in Hong Kong. Uh, if you want to work in technology, um, work in Silicon Valley, right? You don't have to go very far to go to clients. There are four major reasons why many people find management consulting careers uh, very attractive. It's also the same reasons why it's extremely competitive. Probably the number one reason people like consulting is for the learning opportunities. Consultants learn an awful lot in a very short period of time. There is a lot of variety of work in consulting. First off, the work is project-based. Project comes up, you do it, you move on to the next project. Because it's project-based, you're constantly rotating through many different areas um, within the firm. You can be working in one industry today and a different industry tomorrow. You can be working in a sales-related issue for a client and then a finance-related issue for a client, a different client, you know, a few months later. So in, in a very short period of time, you get to see uh, incredible breadth uh, within a, within, across the functional areas within business, as well as multiple industries, depending on the firm that you work for. So it's an incredible opportunity, especially early in your career, to see an awful lot that you really can't see any other way. Uh, in my three years at McKinsey, I saw candidly more than most white collar professionals see in two to three decades. Um, and that's very unusual to have that kind of, of access. You also get incredible training uh, at these consulting firms, especially the more established ones where they have a formal training program. Um, you know, these firms are really good at what they do. Uh, they build a business model take, based on taking very smart, talented individuals 
and teaching them the business skills needed to be effective consultants. Um, so those resources and that training is extremely valuable. The consulting field works largely on the apprenticeship model, which means you might get some, uh, some training up front around basic concept definitions and some of the tools. But really, the, I would say 80, 90 percent of the learning is by doing, where you are learning on the job in real time, uh, typically with someone who's more experienced than you. And so that's a great way to learn a, a variety of skills in a variety of often unpredictable situations. Um, so it a, becomes a huge opportunity. You know, the second reason people like consulting quite candidly is the compensation. Uh, I would say really other than uh, perhaps investment banking, uh, the compensation for consulting jobs is really, really incredible. You know, for someone coming out of undergrad, uh, you know, it's usually right around six figures in the, in the United States and sort of proportionally elsewhere around the world. Um, and that is quite significant, extremely attractive uh, for total compensation in the first year. Uh, after business school and grad school, uh, it is extremely lucrative in, in many ways, and that's why it is also very, very competitive. Uh, also, um, long-term career track. Um, if you make partner, it's you know you're making into the millions of dollars, depending on how whether you're more of a junior partner or more senior partner. And there are only so many career tracks in the world that I'll allow for that level of compensation. So uh, that is one huge appeal. And again, one reason it's very competitive. Uh, third reason is the network. Uh, you get to meet an awful lot of very interesting people um, when you're working these consulting firms. Uh, you have the specific colleagues and peers that you work with. Uh, you have the clients you've met. Um, and because many of these firms have alumni networks, uh, you get an automatic, uh, I guess, foot in the door uh, to get a phone call, to get a meeting uh, with someone who you've never met but also worked at the same firm you did many years ago. So it is, as a McKinsey alumni, uh, it is far easier for me to get a meeting with someone who used to work at McKinsey than some random person off the street. One of the things I really valued about working in consulting was just the incredible peer group that I had. And, you know, it's been a few years since I've been outside of the firm. And just for kicks, I was looking up, hey, where are the people I used to work with? What are they doing now? And it turns out two of the people I worked with are now CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, uh, which I thought was pretty amazing. So that's just one example of this, this incredible people you can call, people, your peers. Um, and it's uh, such an illustrative group um, to be a part of. Finally, consulting opens up a lot of doors to other careers. First, it's uh, an easy springboard to work in industry. Um, you know, two years in consulting allows you to then transfer into industry at a higher level, uh, and a high level of seniority than you would by going directly to industry. Uh, that was true for me, true for probably every one of my colleagues uh, at McKinsey. A lot of former consultants get into some fabulous um, graduate school programs, everything from PhD programs, uh, certainly lots of MBAs and, and whatnot. So you see that quite a bit. Uh, it's also a gateway to getting into some elite uh, fields. Uh, if you think consulting is an elite industry, uh, look at um, venture capital and private equity. Uh, those are firms that are very hard to work for unless you've worked first at a consulting firm or an investment bank. And finally, you know, having a, especially a prestigious consulting firm on your resume, really it becomes an incredibly powerful uh, resume and social signal to others. Uh, I remember uh, uh, one of the people that was a year ahead of me in school at Stanford uh, said, you know, once you work for McKinsey, nobody for the rest of your life ever thinks you're dumb. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think it was an interesting way of phrasing it. Um, and it turns out it was true. I, I've never been thought of as dumb in a professional sense once people think, uh, once people realize I've worked for McKinsey. So that is certainly a, a, nice, um, a nice benefit, no matter, you know, what kind of situation you happen to be in. So let's talk about how do you land a job as a management consultant? There are two general paths to getting a job in consulting. The first is uh, applying as a soon-to-be graduate of uh, an education institution, uh, like an undergraduate or graduate program. This can be uh, 
sort of traditional college, uh, business school, law school, medical school, uh, even PhD type programs. So that's sort of one very, very common path uh, within the uh, education-based um, applicant uh, situation. There's on-campus recruiting where the firms go to your school, onto your campus, try to recruit you, uh, as well as um, uh, non-campus-based recruiting where you apply directly to the firm uh, at a school from a school that they don't normally uh, go on campus to recruit for. So those are kind of the two paths within um, amongst new graduates. The other track is the experienced or experienced professional or lateral hire type program. And these are for people usually with more uh, industry experience in a particular vertical industry where they apply as someone uh, typically anywhere from two to seven or more years uh, of work experience in a particular field. Um, those applications tend to be from the candidate to the firm uh, directly without any kind of intermediary in the middle. For more information on management consulting and how to get a job in management consulting, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and you'll be notified of when new videos are released. Uh, in upcoming videos, I'll focus on getting management consulting job interviews, preparing for the interview, and getting the job offered. You can subscribe by clicking the button below. You'll also want to visit my website at caseinterview.com to get my free case interview preparation program. You'll get instant access to preparation videos, case interview frameworks, and the largest collection of management consulting interview training resources available anywhere. Finally, please leave a comment on my video. I'd love to know what you think, what you learned, and if you have any additional questions that I might not have covered in enough detail. I'll use these comments as input for future videos. Thanks and have a great day.